How's it going everyone? And in this video, we are going to be setting up this Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. And we're going to be walking through how to basically construct the little case that it has, as well as, um, you know, where these sinks and heat sinks are supposed to go. I've already applied these ones. I'll talk to you guys through that. As well as a general overview of this board. So um, this has one Ethernet jack, two USB 3s, two USB 2s, and then we also have two micro HDMI cables, a audio cable, a USB-C cable that's used for power, and then on the back right here we've got our micro SD card slot. Um, so we'll be using this uh, included a little micro SD card for it. Um, this one's a 32 gig, and then also uh, on top of that we have the camera flex cable and then the, also the display flex cable. So um, that is the general layout of this board, and um, the included heat sinks in this kit are pretty cool. They're little copper things. You can um, basically the adhesive just kind of comes off and you stick them on. This right here is the CPU and then we've got the RAM right next to it and we have this guy right there which is the controller for these two uh, sets of USB ports and then we also have our Ethernet uh, controller right there that gets its own little heatsink too. And the included fan with this guy um, comes on like this and the way uh, you connect it or you wire it is basically um, you have these 30 pins up top and on your top row not the most far left one, but these two are going to be the ones you actually connect to it. And you want it to be set up so that the red pin is going to be um, immediately next to it like that. So you do a little side view like this. You would want your red pin to be coming in just like that. It's pretty easy to check these things um, once we power this guy up. So um, I'm going to be using the included USB-C cable right here. And I'm going to be plugging this guy in. And this comes with a little power switch too. This right now is in the on position. And when I turn on this guy, you see these lights come on. And we can also see that this fan is now spinning. So um, that is the setup you should have. If the fan's not turning on, make sure you've got the right pins. And also make sure that the red pin is, you know, pin two in this case. Um, but yeah, so that is general power for this guy as well as the chip layout. I'm going to disconnect this guy. I'm going to set this guy aside for a moment and now we can actually like put this all together so i'm going to remove our fan for now and the case has three parts so this is the base of the case so you can see these little cutouts for your ports it's going to sit in there just like that and leave it right there uh, and then we've got this mid piece and this mid piece has little connection points so it clips into you and should also be going around these outside, so just make sure you set this thing in there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of fidgeting, but eventually it should come together. Nice. And so yeah, with just plastic, I think you're able to do uh, pretty well with this thing. They do include four mounting screws for this guy, um, but I'm not going to be using those uh, for the time being. And then also we've got our fan pins, which again, those two inner ones. So I'm going to take this red guy, just make sure it gets plugged in just like that. And then just to make sure I wire this correctly, again, I'm going to take my USB-C cable and I'm going to plug that guy to there and just confirm that our fan is on. So that's good. So basically our fan's going to be positioned right over these guys to help it uh, actively cool the components of this Raspberry Pi 4. So what we're going to do is, this is the top part of the case, it's going to go on just like that. Um, this fan, the, in this case this logo, should be pointing up like that. Um, and the design on this is actually pretty cool, you can't put it on the wrong way. So we're just going to push this guy down, and you can see the two little holes where we're going to be sticking the uh, actual connectors. And I think if I was doing this I'd want it to be kind of more positioned like that, just so that the fan is more directly over that CPU, which is the part that's going to get pretty hot. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to take the little Phillips screw, we're going to go in there, and just screw these guys down. You don't want to over torque those because you can strip them. Okay. And so now I'm just going to see if we can Maneuver this guy so that we've got some decent coverage. We'll just go with this to being. So 
So there's these two little hooks right there. They're supposed to hook underneath this fan shroud. So these guys are underneath, and then we'll just try to push it in like that. That does not look right. So we gotta take these things out. And then we'll rotate this guy around. Again, just get those little hooks underneath. Clip that in place, and uh, yeah, so there is our fully assembled little Raspberry Pi mini computer, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then what we also will want to be doing here is getting out our little micro SD card. Just come in there and try to get that guy out. So basically, this micro SD card, we are first going to have to uh, get it uh, imaged, but once it's imaged, we will then insert it into here. Uh, to actually get an operating system on this thing and we can connect it to the network or we can hook a display up to it uh, with these little mini USB, I'm um, sorry, mini HDMI cables. So stay tuned for that part. Another other little thing I forgot is um, on the base of this case, we've got these little indents here for the feet. So I am going to be removing these feet and inserting them into here just like so. Awesome, so now we've got our little Raspberry Pi 4 mini computer set up and we'll start plugging it in and having some fun. Alrighty guys, so now that we have finished building our little structure around our Raspberry Pi 4, we're going to actually install the operating system on it. And to do that, we are going to take our little micro SD card and we're going to be putting the Ubuntu image on it. And the really cool thing here is that there's a lot of official support from Ubuntu themselves on this stuff. So you're gonna get like the 100% like developer supported Ubuntu image, um, which makes this process pretty slick and easy. And we'll get started. So um, I am on a Mac right now, but this process is pretty similar for a PC. And the very first thing we're gonna do uh, is just download the uh, part of the Ubuntu operating system that we want. Um, there are two versions. There's a headless version, and that is a fancy way of saying that there's no UI. Um, you only interact through it with the t uh, command line, and you can like connect to it and then you know load up a little web server or something. Um, and then there's also the desktop version, which has the UI on it, where you know you could actually turn this whole thing into like a little mini PC and have like a you know a little cable plugged into a monitor and, and seeing that output. But um, I'm going to be going with the headless version just because it's a bit simpler to get started. We can do another follow-up on the one with the uh, desktop UI. Um, but we'll just do that one to, for now. And in my finder, uh, I do have this downloads folder right here where um, I've already installed, or I'm sorry, I've already downloaded the image um, from the Ubuntu website and it comes in this .xc format. So that means it's compressed. So basically on Mac, you just double click this thing. You know, if we were on Windows, we would use something like 7-zip to decompress it. Um, but basically right now it's expanding it and we'll get back to it once it finishes that process. Cool, so a little 961 meg file just now turned into a four gigabyte sized image file on our computer. Um, so now what I'm gonna be doing is opening up Belena Etcher. This is more open source stuff uh, that we'll be using for actually creating a bootable micro SD card for ourselves for our little uh, Raspberry Pi. And on top of that, I am going to be using uh, a USB-C adapter with a micro SD card slot in it. So I'm just gonna be inserting my 32 gig micro SD card into that, just like so. I'm gonna plug this into the computer. And uh, I'm gonna close this up real quick. And I'm going to save flash from file. And this is the part where uh, in my downloads folder, we will have that image file that we've loaded and expanded. And we're gonna select our target. And you can see that it's already identifying the uh, little SD card that's micro SD card that's on our Mac. And I'm just gonna hit select. And now we're gonna click on flash and it's gonna prompt me for a password. So I'm gonna give it my password. And now we're just going to let this thing run through its motions. And this part can take a bit, so we'll get back to it when it's done. Alrighty, so now we have successfully finished putting the Ubuntu image onto our micro SD card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up another finder window and I'm going to make sure that uh, we are ejecting um, the little card that we just imaged. So I'm gonna make sure to eject that stuff. I'm just gonna be disconnecting it. Okay, so now we've got our micro SD card. 
pulling that out. And I'm going to be inserting the micro SD card into the slot on the underside of this guy. Okay, so that guy's plugged in. I'm just gonna reattach this guy. Okay, excellent. Now uh, I'm going to power this guy on with the USB-C cable. And I can see the little light through there. And I can hear the fan on right now. And now that the fan is on, I'm also going to be attaching Ethernet jack. So I've now got an Ethernet cable in there. You can see the little lights coming on, hopefully. I'm going to open up a Chrome page and I'm going to go to my Wi Fi, uh, my router. And there is our little headless Ubuntu Raspberry Pi 4 server right next to me running. So I'm going to copy this guy's IP address and we'll go to terminal, make this full screen. And uh, the default Ubuntu credentials for their image are Ubuntu for both the username and the password, all lowercase. So I'm gonna do SSH and then Ubuntu at, and then just paste in this IP address that we have. And I'm gonna say, yes, it's okay to continue connecting. And it's asking for, for the password and the password is Ubuntu. And it's wanting us to change our password. Okay, so I just reset the password and then it just closed out the connection on me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconnect to that. And there we are, we are now officially connected to our Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Uh, and we prepared this whole thing through our Mac and you know we can start doing some cool things now like installing some more images or, or you know other packages and stuff. Um, but yeah, for the sake of a little introduction to this, I hope this is helpful stuff. Um, and the processor temperature right now is at 38.5, which is pretty decent. Um, I will say the fan speed is uh, definitely on, um, but looks like we've got a good amount of RAM to be playing with and um, yeah, so uh, thank you all for watching. Um, in terms of this specific unit that I have on Amazon, just as a little review, um, I'd say the biggest gripe I have with it um, is that the cutout here is not enough. And so basically very easily, if you can see the power for this guy, hopefully you can see it through there, but like little nudges in that can just completely make the power go off. So that's something that I would fix by making that a bigger cutout. Um, another thing I'll call out on that is that, um, you know, I do have like another uh, USB-C cable and like it, again, because that cutout is not big enough, so it's led to some issues. Um, so that's something that's a little bit frustrating. Uh, another thing that I would say is the um, included in this kit, they gave like a USB 2 to micro SD card reader. And while that is cool, um, I think most people these days are running uh, USB-C, so um, being able to connect that uh, means you're going to have to buy like an adapter like I have. So um, another just little gripe, but um, I would include like a USB-C to micro SD card adapter. Um, and yeah, but overall, very impressed, very happy with the kit. If you guys want to check it out, go for it. Um, this is the, uh, they gave two micro HDMI cables um, and you know down the road we will uh, get started with actually seeing what it's like um, to set this up as like a full kind of mini PC thing um, but you know just for a little introduction and, and you know starter kit for you know mini PCs I think it's pretty cool so thank you all for watching let me know if you have any questions and be well.